Hi. I want to talk to uh, you folks who live in cold climates. You know, zones such as 5A through 8B. This is some important information for you folks. Since I specialize in citrus trees, I want to help you to grow and be successful at growing citrus trees in your zone. One of the questions I often get is, I live in a cold climate and I can't possibly grow them. Or I've tried before and it just never works out. I got news for you. You're not watching the correct channel. I'm gonna take you through a few things and I'm gonna share with you how you too can not only grow them, but be successful at it. There's many places across the world that still grow citrus in cold areas, especially those seasons to where, well, it can get really, really below 20, 10, five degrees Fahrenheit. We're talking about some extremely cold weather, but there's a few precaution that you have to make sure you take note of. And there's a few variables that are involved in making sure that you're successful growing your own trees. Now, number one, we're gonna specifically focus on <clears throat> zone 5A through zone 8B. Now, may I remind you, I'm in Sacramento Valley. That's zone nine the capital of California, and it is extremely hot here. I have my towel, so occasionally I'll wipe my face simply because it's quite hot and my towel has been soaked in cold water. So let's go forward. Can you grow them? Absolutely. Here's what you need to do. First of all, we need to understand the origins of citrus, and we need to identify where do citrus grow? Where do they thrive? Citrus just mostly thrive in subtropical and tropical climates. In other words, they love heat, believe it or not. And the more mature they get and the more established they get, the more heat they can tolerate. Now that you know that, you know that growing citruses in cold climate is just not idea. They're not cold uh, hardy. Although you may get some citruses that can get down to about 30 degrees, for the most part, citrus is going to have some problem and struggle if they get ice, snow, and extreme cold conditions. How do you beat that living in zones five through eight? You simply grow dwarf variety. Dwarf varieties are important. Why? Because dwarf varieties can be grown in a container that's suitable to the size of the tree. Hmm, interesting. So I can grow a dwarf variety, not a semi-dwarf, no. How about a standard? No, because if you put those in containers, you're gonna have some large containers, yet alone from time to time over the years, you're going to have to take those trees out and do some root pruning in order to keep them in those containers. I wouldn't suggest that. Quite simply, just go ahead. Matter of fact, let me share with some. I'm gonna stop for a moment and pause and I'm gonna go ahead and share my Meyer lemon that's in a container. I'm gonna show you some other citrus trees that are also growing in containers. Now, while you're viewing these photos and these pictures, go ahead and take note of what I'm about to say. You can grow dwarf varieties in a container simply because it makes it easier for them to move around. Moving them around and making them portable, probably putting them on a dolly system is gonna come in hand. Keep that in mind as I continue to speak to you folks through five and eight. So, reason why? Simply put, keep them out in the spring, in the summer, the growing season. Take them out, put them in the sun, but don't just put them anywhere in the sun. For you folks who are in zones five through eight, you gotta remember something. Citruses, once again, loves heat. So take you a southern exposed wall, push it up against a wall, okay? and leave it there for the growing season. But there's something you gotta remember, fall is creeping. Just before the first frost, you need to make sure you definitely take note of this. Acclimate your tree over a seven day period. Six hours outside in the light and the rest of the day indoors. So give it that morning sunlight and then take it indoors. 
Do that over seven days. Some of you may find that it takes you two weeks to acclimate your tree. You want to acclimate your tree from the outdoors to the indoors. And that's very important. And I'll tell you why. Because you don't want to shock your tree. Your tree is, uh, have been in the outdoor environment. And if it goes through an environmental change, just like we do, we tend to take on some negative side effects. It's very important that you understand trees, nature is no difference from us. And we must respect it as it gives us nothing but love and respect. Now that you know that, we've gone over the fact that you need to grow dwarf varieties. You need to put them in containers. Now I'll tell you something right now. Please don't put a tree that's less than three years old in a container. Uh, that's too big. It's just not gonna work out for you. Now, I'm not stating that you can't do it, but the fact that most of you have no experience in this arena, I would tread the waters lightly and put them in a container that's gonna be at least 12 inches in width. Here's what I'm saying. Because once you plant that tree in the container, water is gonna run away from the roots to its least resistance. That means away from it, not at it. So you wanna put it in a container. I don't know how big a one-year-old tree may be in your area, but I know the one and two-year-old trees in our area is enough to put into a 15-gallon container. Once you get to a three, four, five-year-old tree, they should have all, you know, from the 15-gallon container, there's no neck size up like a 20-gallon. Forget about it. Place it in a 40-gallon or more. 40 gallons is a, a container they can stay in for the life if they're um, a dwarf varieties. And I'll put a link down below where you can, folks can go and purchase your 40 gallons. If you have a difficult time purchasing your 40 gallons, because the 40 gallons that you see my trees in, that was a time when it was very inexpensive. Now that the word has caught on, you can't go anywhere on site. They're about 190 bucks to about $300 now, believe it or not. Now, if you know a friendly supplier in your neighborhood and they could get it for you, awesome. But I'll put the link up down below in the description and you can proceed from that point now we have to understand that once you take your trees indoors you need to put them towards a southern exposed window to get that appropriate light if you don't have the light then you can supplement with some high lead bulbs that simulate the sunlight bulbs that are going to be between 5500k and 6500k and I'll tell you something right now, one bulb will be, be enough for one tree. And I'm telling you, there are some large fluorescent bulbs. I'll put that link in the description also below. So make sure you check the description for all the appropriate information that I'm conveying to all of you folks now, okay? At the end of the video, at least. Now, here's another thing. What if you don't have supplemental light? What if you don't have a ton of money and you just don't wanna invest in it? Although the bulbs are inexpensive, I can understand some of you may just have a garage pull it into your garage on your dolly at night in the evening time in the daytime pull it back out into your driveway and let it absorb that light as best it can you too can in fact grow citrus trees okay now I'm gonna share with you right now um, some information that is very important because growing citrus trees in containers but keeping them alive is equally as important Here's what you do, zones five through eight. Make sure that when it comes to the soil you use, you can follow the recommendations from the videos that I'll make sure I put in the link down below in the description and maybe even put a few up here to the left and right of me. You see that? Right there. Okay. Now, follow those recommendations of the soil. If you can't find the soil that I recommend in my videos, then all you need is a good quality potting soil and make sure you go and pick up some soil sulfur. Okay, that's going to acidify your soil. Very important. And I got another video I'll be putting up that's gonna explain those details. And by the time you folks see this video, you'll get the point. You'll understand how to follow along. Now, make sure you got a good rich soil, but it needs to be well draining. So it needs to be able to hold on to enough water, but be well draining. Okay, very important. Now, feeding. When you feed your trees in a cold climate, there are some precautions you need to take. A two-year-old tree, let's give an example, needs a half a pound of fertilizer. A three-year-old tree needs a pound of fertilizer. 
what fertilizer you use is going to make a big determining factor in making sure that your pH stays consistent throughout the life of that tree inside that container. Because once you plant your tree in a container, that soil over the years is going to erode and it's not going to carry those same nutrients to keep the PA down where it needs to be. Here's what you do. While you're using a fertilizer that's made for acid-loving plants, that's going to help keep the pH down. And from time to time, you can go in every year and add some compost to it. Once you add the compost, make sure you add your fertilizers as well, okay? And I got a few videos that'll teach you how to feed your citrus trees. Just watch my citrus right here, Citrus Playlist 101, all right? Now that you know how to do that, what about watering? Watering your trees in a cold climate, be careful, don't overwater them because trees are gonna hold on to that moisture much longer than they would if they were in a subtropical or tropical environment. So it's very important that you water your trees, but there's something that you can use, especially for you folks who have container grown trees. So it's important that every year you check the pH of the soil that's in your containers. It's very important to know this because not knowing the pH and encountering a lot of problems such as the foliage defoliating or the foliage becoming yellow, red, orange, and it just simply, well, the tree does not look healthy anymore. It's important and most of the time you can tell how things are going along with just a simple pH test and a simple NPK test. Now, I tend to use these when it comes to my um, my um, containers. I'm gonna get out of the way here because I wanted to focus here. There we are. Okay, I tend to use these guys right here. You can pick these up for 10 or 15 bucks at many local nurseries. However, the directions is also on the back. You see that? NPK and your pH. This will take care of them both. You can also go to my Amazon link that's right in the description below here and you can purchase this very kit. It'll help my channel out a little bit. We don't get much, okay? But as affiliates, we get just a few cents and it adds up over time. Another thing that you definitely wanna make sure you look out for when it comes to um, your water or if the soil is dry or moist, it's very important. Let me share this with you. Citrus trees don't have deep root, but they have some shallow roots, which are called feeder roots. Zone five through eight, listen up and hear me clear. The feeder roots should never be covered up with soil. You can cover it up with mulch, but not soil. The feeder root is the lifeline to the rest of the plant. So the entire root system that sits underground, the feeder roots is the lifeline because it picks up any traces of water and air. Very important, very, very important to understand this. Now, how do you check your containers? Well, while you're looking at how I check my containers, I'm gonna share with you that you need to check them with something like this. This is called a rapid test meter. I'm gonna step out of the way so the focus can go here. So pay very close attention, okay? Let's see if I, there we go. You see that? This is a rapid test meter. You see how it goes from dry to wet. You wanna keep your containers in the moist area. Let me get a little closer. You see that, folks? All right, and it's got a rod on it. See that prawn? See this here? That's the sensor. Sort of like built in, it's, it's uh, conductivity. And I won't get into all these sort of uh, electrical type um, language that most of you may not understand. An electrician would understand what I'm talking about. Okay, if someone who's been playing with these sort of things or anything that's similar to this would understand what I'm talking about. Here it is though. I'm gonna, did you see the video that I just showed you? Yes, that's how you test it. So remember, citrus trees, they like to sort of dry out from the first top inch of the soil down to about six inches. Let them dry out. When, uh, whether you're in a cold climate or a warm climate, let them dry out before you water them again. Very important you understand that. If you have it on a drip irrigation system, then make sure you water them uh, probably once a week. 
when the temperature gets above 90 degrees, double digits, then you may want to go in there and water them twice a week. Okay? I tend to do mine for five minutes at a time every 12 hours, simply because I'm telling you, when you got trees growing in containers and trees are growing in the ground, there's no comparison. Trees that go in the ground dig deeper for water content. Trees in a container depends on you for the water that they receive. Now, folks, I've just shared with you how successful you can, in fact, be and how easy and simple it is to grow trees in your zone. Make no excuses. Make no mistakes about it. Growing citrus trees in zone 5A to 8B is easy as 1, 2, 3. You understand? A, B, C. Easy as 1, 2, 3. A, B, C. You know that song, right? Sing it when you're planting your citrus trees. And I guarantee you, you'll have one heck of a time. Now, I've shared so much with you folks. Did I answer your questions? Do you have any lingering questions for those who live in zones five through eight? If you have any questions, post them in the, you know, below the video here in the chat area or the whatever they want to call it, the post area where all the subscribers ask questions. And I'll get back to you. I guarantee you I will. Do understand this. When you get your citrus trees in your area, buy them from a reputable dealer or nursery. Do not purchase citrus trees from people who do um, what they call cuttings. Because a lot of times you're going to be plagued with the disease. And we have some diseases out here in California that's been introduced over the many years that will literally kill a citrus tree. And they're carried by a specific aphid. Be careful where you get your trees from. And as I've always stated, do your due diligence. I always do. And you wonder why my trees look as good as they do. A meter, a tester. Some of you may find this too much work to do. Well, did you get through high school? That was a lot of work, wasn't it? How about the universities? That was a lot of work, wasn't it? Now you have something you can truly cherish and you don't even need a degree. Just let those who are master gardeners teach you. Look behind me. They don't get any prettier than this. Absolutely amazing. 